So last night we went to an Unpub event. What's up, Julie? Hey, hey. And uh, do you know what Unpub no. is, Carla? Yes. What is Unpub? It's like these events that they do, and you can you have the chance of just bringing in your games or whatever to play, and have other people test it out and try it to see if they like and give their opinion on whatever your product you're working on. Did you already know about Unpub, or did yeah. you just find out? I didn't know about it. Oh, okay. I think I found out about it from Ben, uh, and then I saw it in uh, I think like Jamie Stegmeyer's blog. But yeah, I, I had no idea about Unpub, um, and so what happened was Ben and I drove out probably about an hour and a half yeah. from here, not close. We thought uh, it, I thought it was gonna be like an hour, but I looked that up before, no. like earlier in the day. It's, it's normally an hour. We just went at five o'clock. Yeah, we so. went at rush hour. And so, um, terrible drive. It's like all like 202 and yes. like back roads and, and no, no, no. It's oh, like, really? it's just like lights and, and like going through neighborhoods and stuff. Just terrible. And so we finally get to this place, the Appalachian Brew Pub Brewing Company. Yep. And it is closed. Yeah. We get there. Are you serious? And there's just like chairs on tables, oh. lights off. And More like, unlocked. and there's no, and there's nothing, right? Hello, <laughs> you're just finding out about this now. Oh, We're catching what? real drums expression right here. Yep. The door wasn't even that's locked. That's how we were yesterday. That's the thing. Yeah, door was unlocked. We walked inside. Yeah, we're like, uh, hello. Like maybe there's a guy cleaning up or something. And it and then there's a sign that says winter hours were closed Monday through Wednesday. But no sign about like unpub or our event that we were supposed to go to, so we had no idea what's going on. And so we're just kind of milling about, we're like, uh, do we just drive like an hour and a half here? Or maybe it's going to be an hour and a half back and like just nothing. And so we're sitting around a little while. And then what another the guy, guy comes. Well, there's no one there. Oh, so you just sit in this place completely We're just, empty? We're just like, yeah, like, what do we do? Well, it, was so, in like, it was in like a little mall. So we were sitting outside of yeah, the Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so to paint the picture, it's like you go inside and there's like a yoga studio or something. and Jimboree. A Jimboree. Yeah, and then, like, you go upstairs, and then there's this brewing company. And, like, we thought we were going to go there and play games. And it turns out that nobody was there. And so we're just like, oh, my God. And so then another guy comes. And at this point, we're already late, right? We're, like, half an hour. It started at 6, and we got there at 6.30 yeah, because right. it took so long to get there. Right. And so I was like, maybe did they show up and, and nobody else showed up, so they just, like, closed it? Like, right. I, I don't know. I don't know if they have anything to do with the restaurant or what. And so... Um, and so then another guy comes, and he's, you know, clearly a gaming guy. He's got his game with him. Um, you know, he's got, like, a tackle box full of, like, figures and stuff. And, um, and you know, same situation. And so I start emailing the, the, the site. I'm like, um, hey, did you guys move it? What's going on? And then the other guy, his name is Mark, he went on their Twitter, and he found out that, I guess, they found out that it was closed, too, the same way we did. And so they moved it to another nearby diner. So we drive to the diner. And there, there they were. So uh, I guess what my a mess. yeah. Well, I mean, so we ended up getting there. What, like six forty-five or something like yeah, that. Give or take. Okay, so you didn't wait that long. No. After getting there, six. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't too bad. Um, I mean, we got there. There was like what four or five other people there. Something like that at first, yeah. yeah. And then more people came later. And I mean, so, I mean, when we got there, no one was actually playing anything anyway. Yeah, I think they were just kind of sitting around waiting to see if people would show up. Yeah. And more people did show up, but three of us, and then I'd say at least five other people came. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't know what to expect, because I had never been to something like this. Ben, you said that you had been to one, right? And mm -hmm. so I didn't know if it's like a bunch of gamers that were looking to play other people's games, or if it was just going to be everybody had their own game, and that's all they cared about. And they just wanted to get other people to play test their games, you know, because mm -hmm. that, that could certainly happen. Yeah. Um, but we just spent the first, I'd say, like, 15, 20 minutes just, like, chatting with everyone, um, getting to know everybody. Everyone was really cool. They had a, they knew, like, a lot of, like, local uh, game stores and local connections. A few of the guys had uh, already kickstarted a game or oh, two. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Every, one thing I noticed, everybody had a business card. Mm -hmm. And we did not. <laughs> and that made me feel really... Uh, Behind the eight ball. Not like it matters. They didn't care. Um, and I was like, well, just, just find the, the Facebook group. It's called the Board Game Club. And, you know, and we'll chat on say, there. Most of the guys there were, have, like, been doing this for a while. Yeah. But still, I you know, I was like, damn it. 
Because that's the thing. When when you get into like a new a new like hobby or something like that, I know a lot of people. The first thing they want to do is like business cards, set up an LLC. Like if they're getting into a business, right? And then the people that teach you how to do whatever business, they say, no, don't worry about any of that. The most important thing is getting customers or whatever, right? So if you're going to make a board game, probably the most important thing to do is like start prototyping your game, right? Yep. The first thing you do should not be to make business cards. That being said, I kind of wish I had some business cards. I don't want to hand like scraps of paper right, or be like, right. ah, find me on Facebook, yo. Oh, the Facebook things seem to work out all right. Yeah. Chris Goodlett says, I'm ready to play test yours. Chris is ready. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. I'll talk with Ben. We'll have a live meeting between me and Ben, and uh, and you'll get to and see Carla will watch. the decisions. I, you just see my reaction. Carla's our secretary. <laughs> <laughs> Carla, un- Carla's un- our unpre- sexy secretary. Unprepared secretary. No mm. writing utensils. Nothing. I know. That's I, it's, right. just, it's all in my head. It's like a steel trap up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway. Um, I'm always late. <laughs> <laughs> so... So pretty pretty soon, right after you know we were talking, getting to know each other, and, and here's the thing: I, I was afraid that there might be like kind of uh, weird people there, which is you know maybe that's maybe that's judgmental of me, but you never know. Like sometimes you go to like some well, coming from like um, playing magic background. Yeah, there's some weird dudes. There's out some there. weird dudes that play magic, and I would imagine there's some weird dudes that play a lot of these at games. cons. Yeah, you know, like the the people that are really into winning and like really like you know almost like Aspergery about it. And, uh, but I mean, like all these guys seem cool. Like they all seem like guys I would like actually want to hang out with. Um, so pretty, no, can have a, not all of them. <laughs> well, well, be careful because maybe they're watching if they join the Facebook group. <laughs> um, I like you if you're watching. Ben doesn't like you. Whoever, whoever I don't like anybody, here. so it's fine. <laughs> maybe they didn't like you either. I'm very easy. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Ben's like, you do your thing. Yeah. I do my thing. Um, and we need to get everyone to Pittsburgh to eat and play games. Pittsburgh. I, I have some friends in Pittsburgh. I'd love to come visit. I like Pittsburgh. It's, cool. it's a nice looking city. Cool city. That's, yeah. that's a weekend, though. That's a, that's a trip, yeah. So anyway, so on with the story. Um, so we were chatting. Um, and then um, someone, there was another Ben there. He just suggested, he's like, well, let's play your game. And I thought that was cool because I didn't know if there was going to be like a pecking order. Like, mm-hmm. oh, man, these guys have been, like, coming to these events for a while. He the, he's the uh, organizer of it, too. So oh, Ben's he, the organizer. Yeah, he, he kind of knew what was going down. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, so, uh, so like, okay, cool. So then Ben, the other Ben, and then, uh, see you later, Adam, Chris. Yeah. Um, data later. calls. And then... Um, Adam. Was it Adam? Yep. Okay, Mark played later. Yeah, yeah so they, they played, like, a three-player game of the space version that that Ben uh, put together, and uh, I have it in my backpack. Um, I forget if we showed it yet. Probably not. Mm-hmm. But it's pretty similar to uh, the trashed artwork if I showed that, uh, but with the backing that um, I don't need this Pokemon open. one? But yeah, with, uh, with card sleeves and yeah, the magic yeah. cards and all that stuff. Um, and so Annoying Me uh, made these forms and had them fill it out. And then later on, we actually played again. Um, and uh, we played with the theme, my, my skin, the disaster, and I just had them use the same form rather than fill out again and want them to feel like they're working here. Don't don't look ahead. Don't look ahead. We'll get to it. I'm so curious. <laughs> we'll get to it. No, now I'm going to close it up. This is when the hey, secretary Kristen. comes in. No, <laughs> you got to gotta multitask. Thing. Okay. Um, uh-huh. So that was a pretty short game, right? You guys banged that out in like half an hour or so, right? Less than that, I think. Meanwhile, like, we were also, like, talking about, you know, Kickstarter and stuff in between. So it wasn't, like, a focus game. Yeah. Um, And, uh, yeah, ordering food, which I didn't like the food. How how were your fries? I had, like, one of your fries. They were fries. Yeah, my wings were very dry. I was not a fan. I will not be ordering wings from there next time. Um, Oh, there will be a next time? I think they do it every month, so okay. I would like to go back. Yeah, first one did every month. Yeah, I think some of the guys live around there. One of the guys came up from Delaware. Um, Who came up from Delaware? Mark. Mm. Yeah, that's why his, ga- his uh, company was First State Games. Yeah. Okay. Um, they have, a, a, if you go to Meetup, they have mm. a lot of board game groups that, mm. like, people that just want to meet up to play games just or play? whatever. So I'm... And they have ones around here in this area too. So oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure we can, if you want to, you can yeah. look at Yeah, maybe that'll be the next step. Um, 
to try to get get, get more yeah. people to test it out. Even though they're probably there to play established games, it, it doesn't hurt. You know? No, absolutely not. As we say this to a bunch of people that already volunteered to play test our game. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so after it played the space theme, then I think we kind of just like ate a little bit, and then we played Adam's game, who he had a really cool... That was interesting. He had a really cool uh, kind of backstory. He actually made the Kickstarter videos for, for some of the other guys because he's like, a, I don't know if he's like a writer or just like a, an independent filmmaker. I think he joined this group last night, so maybe he'll end up seeing this. But he actually uh, ha- has made like several horror movies, and they all, they all started blood. There's like Bloodlust that started like a porn star. What's her name? Like Jenna Austin or Austin? No, Lexus, Texas. Lexus, Texas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lexus, Texas. Possibly three X's in the Texas. Not sure. I didn't, I didn't look her up yet. Oh, I thought it was three X's in a Lexus. Alexis? <laughs> I'm sure there's three somewhere in there. That's funny. Um, and she's like splatter. <laughs> and he told a funny story. He's like, because they, uh, someone suggested, you know, you should just uh, hire an adult film actress to act in your movie because they know how to act and they won't take it too seriously and you know they're, they're not you know they, they won't be like oh i can't do this horror movie and so he, when he called up the her agent alexis texas his agent the agent was like oh okay yeah she might be interested is it hardcore or softcore and he was like uh <laughs> and i was like the answer is always hardcore like if someone <laughs> like even if you weren't yeah, thinking yeah. it well now it'll be hardcore yeah um so then he filmed that, and then he did another movie called uh, Blood Runner, I think. And I didn't, I didn't check any of these out yet. Apparently, they're on like Amazon Prime and Hulu and stuff. Oh wow! But then he got cool. Ice T from um, you know NCIS, you know the right. actor Ice T. Oh, really? Yeah. Law and Order. Law and Order, whatever. That's all the same stuff. Uh, you definitely know who this actor is. It seems like you don't know who I'm talking about, but if you saw a picture, okay. you would know him. Um, who is it? So anyway. Ice tea. Okay. You know, like in the '90s, there was Ice Cube, and then there's Ice Tea. You were you were you were in a different here. country. Yeah. You were like five, so <laughs> damn millennials. Um, so uh, so anyway, the reason why I bring it. What's up, Chris? And so the reason why I, I bring up his movie thing is because he's actually making a movie called Alpha Rift, right? Yep. That's how about right. And in the movie, uh, they play this board game. And then he made the board game that like, takes place in the movie to like oh, accompany nice. it. Yeah, a board game based on the movie to help promote the movie, to help promote the board game. Yeah, it's like a... Yeah. And I, like, I love that. Like a I love, thing. Yeah, I love how there's like a, a tie-in, like a big tie-in, which is really cool. Um, so we played that. Kind of like uh, they kick-started that game that was on... Was it Game of Thrones or something? The mm. one, the Tic Tac one? Tac- no, that's uh, King Killer. Yes. That, that's exactly what I said. I was okay. like, it's kind of like... Kind of like that, although this is being designed like simultaneously. Okay. Whereas TAC was just based on the descriptions in King Killer. Um, so we played that. Um, and then. You and now. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> and then And then I think we. Uh, and then I think you left pretty soon after that, right? Yeah. Um, and then. What time was that? Like 9? It was like 8 30, maybe? 8 30. Okay. Yeah, nine um, I stayed till just about 10. Um, I wanted the guys who had played the space theme to play the disaster theme to see what they thought about the theme, see if it helped change mechanics at all or anything like that. So we played that. We played that four-player, which is definitely the more players, the the different experience it is. Um, and um, yeah, it, it went over really well. Um, the guys seemed pretty excited about the theme, and we got feedback, which I wanted to go through and. Um, I think that that was about it. That was the last game we played. We hung out, talked a little while longer, and left. But really cool. If anyone is interested in playtesting a game, definitely go to unpub.net, I believe. Or just search unpub. You'll find it. Um, and then there's local ones. I think it's mostly East Coast, U.S. Uh, and there's a big one the in next, Baltimore. The next ones coming up are uh, like Midwest, though. Oh, yeah. yeah that's right. Just in Ohio and stuff. Yeah, the next so. thing on the site isn't until Philadelphia's PAX, I think. Yeah, yeah, I always hear about packs. Yeah, me too. So let me guys show you the um, the Actual feedback one. form I put together. And this, sorry, I'm going to get a little close to the mic here. But I took a lot of these questions. I added some of my own stuff up top. But a lot of these questions I grabbed from our friends over at Chai. They actually have a Facebook group too. A uh, guy, Daniel, and his wife. I don't think I've talked to his wife much. But Daniel I've been talking to. They're actually sponsoring... Um, uh, they're, they're sponsoring 
a, a, giveaway? a giveaway in like two in like early December because that's when they're kickstarting. Their game, actually. I saw it they have like a play test group. You should oh, join. Really? Yeah, they can do a print and play. Maybe we'll do one on here during yeah, that week when they. Cool. Uh, or maybe I could see if they'll send us a, a review copy. We'll yeah, see. Um, but uh, I took a bunch of. I, I guess one could say sti- stole, but uh, let's just say I borrowed a few of their questions because I thought they had a, a really good questionnaire. Um, first impression and uh, reading it one through five. And the big thing is we wanted like honest feedback. And I think we got honest feedback. I, I particularly was asking them about negative things. I wanted negative feedback if possible. Um, I want people to hate the game. Well, I just, I don't want them to be like, like, you know, if they like you and they don't want to like hurt your feelings or something like that, you know, they like kind of give you glowing reviews. And I had, I found I had to like stop myself from like almost like promoting the game while playing it, you know, like as like a car was played, I'm like, oh, this is the moment in a disaster movie when this happens and a dinosaur eats your hero and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Wait, there's I, dinosaurs in the game? No, no, but you know, whatever. I'm just giving like uh, an example. No dinosaurs yet. Um, so let's see. Let's keep this anonymous because we don't want to. I don't want to see who said what quite so openly, just in case they're watching, just in case they don't want to hurt our feelings or whatever. Um, but this one, so on a scale from one to five, this person said, first impression, would you play the game again? Four. Four out of five. Pretty good, right? We'll take that. How clear were the rules? We got a four. Uh, how did you like the theme? This is a three. Uh, so right so which, in the middle. Well, you gotta say which version this. This was. is for space <coughs> version. This is for space version. Um, I think I told him to just jot down for the disaster. I think he just wrote something down here. Um, how streamlined is the game? Flows well. Everything fit. So that's good. That was, um, you know, worrying about like unnecessary rules or complications or whatever. So that that was the only five he gave us here. Did it feel engaged till the end? And we got a three. So that's not that's not great on that one. Uh, his thoughts were slightly more variety in mechanics would help long game would help long games, but very solid. And from talking to him afterwards, I think uh, that was uh, about you know that everyone felt like it was pretty solid. It felt like a, a real game. Felt mm-hmm. felt fun. Um, he did mention I remember now saying that like he feels like it needs one more thing because yeah. he pointed out that. Um, that there's a uh, obviously there's the discard mechanic either in your hands or in your in your discard well, he pile. wanted more interactivity in the game, which yeah. is actually something that I took out while designing it just to keep the flow of the game quicker. To keep it moving faster. Yeah, because the more you're forced to interact with within the cards within the turn, mm-hmm. the slower it's going to go. Yeah, because once you know how to play and you know all the cards, you can just pretty much like boom, 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 boom. You know where to go. Um, but then he pointed out like. Like, I hadn't even thought about it this way, but then there's sort of, like, sets of things that happen. There's discard stuff that happens. Uh, there's retrieve stuff that happens. And then there's, like, chaos kind of stuff that happens, like shuffling our hands together or um, passing That's your hands to the left. Like, those are, like, in the same kind of group. Yeah. And he was saying that he feels like there should be one more thing, like, not it's one of those thing things. Though. Not necessarily. Not not more one of those things that messes I mean, like your one, hand up. One more, one more set of things. things Right, like a discard I, thing, a mess your hands up thing, and one other actually, thing. There used to be a mess with your deck mechanic in it. That's true, because right now that, there is no way to mess with someone's deck. And that's on purpose, because that was not fun. It's not, what, what kind of thing was, would happen? Like what, what kind it, would, of card? It, would, it would just like get rid of stuff out of your deck too, but there was just never... Like when playtesting it initially, there was just never any point in the game where you were like, well, my cards are safe here. Which is why uh, I took out the deck stuff, and then cards like Recharge would shuffle your cards back into your deck, so that they're safe. So yeah. that you can be like you can you can go into the middle pile, grab out that counter that you've really been wanting, and then shuffle it back into your deck. So it's not like oh, I grabbed it back and now it's just gonna go. Yeah, because um, I, I thought about that too. I was like, why why want to shuffle your stuff back in your deck? Your deck's going to run out and you're just going to shuffle it anyway. What's the point? But yeah, you really want to protect those good cards. Yeah, yeah, your deck is the only safe spot for your cards in the game. Yeah, so that's interesting. So that kind of goes back to, at least for the disaster theme, the idea that like your deck is like your like little base, like your little safe haven. Um, one thing, uh, the um, when we played the disaster version, 
um, one of the guys got uh, Rescue Mission, which was the, the one that brings half of the discard pile to your to your discard pile, half of the middle, middle disaster pile, pile mm-hmm. to your discard pile. Um, at the like very end of the game, when everyone was down to like five cards, and so it did. It felt like a little bit at that point, like oh well, he's just gonna win now, and like, and now rescue mission is even in his discard pile, you know, and like unless we can get rid of that, so I it, it did wonder if if that should be another like destroy itself card or no, or, because that changes. Because of the way the game flows, the power level of the cards fluctuate, you know, as the game goes. Mm-hmm. So your rescue mission is not as powerful in the beginning, but it's right. a much bigger game changer at the end. Yeah. And changing it to destroying itself makes it so that you don't want to use it until basically the end. And then you're just sitting there, sitting on that card mm-hmm. for the entire game, just hoping that no one has... Hey, goodbye, <laughs> Tsunami or something. or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, those cards are purposely not made to destroy themselves because they're supposed to be powerful cards. And yeah. that one and the one to remove half the cards from the, the discard pile, were sp- they're supposed to be your power cards. There's only one in yeah. the deck. So Deep Freeze, the, the discard half of your, um, your uh, discard pile. Which I use when... Last time we played, yeah. you used the ones that got the half of the right, deck, and then you right used after it on that, me. I used food. Yeah. yeah, so that that's I, you know, I like that. I, I like them both, but I like that because it like anything you're doing that is like whittling away at everybody's hand and like triggering the end game more. It's like it's great. I guess I, I just wonder if there's anything to do that to, um, to tweak where you recover half the cards that like makes it like, okay, well now you're gonna win because you drew that card. Well, not necessarily because in my game, mm-hmm. um, I forget who played the card, played that card mm-hmm. and lost. Yeah, and I did too when we played. Yeah. I guess it depends on like when so, you get it. Like at, at that. Well, not just that, it also depends on the other cards people have and if they do actually decide to focus on you because it usually makes you the target. Yeah, I was trying to do that too. I was trying to rally everybody like, hey guys, look at, look at this deck here, we gotta, Stop fighting each other, but then he played uh, emergency shelter, which is the bunker shield renamed, um, and uh, and so we couldn't like do anything to him, and so we just like sort of started well, did you picking change at in each the other. Disaster once so that it gets rid of itself. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I mean, so that that staved him off for one turn, but when we only had like four cards left, then we started attacking each yeah. other. Um, I ended up with one card, and it was just super scientist, and I didn't know like what to do. Do I just play it and against? counter itself <laughs> like what what happens in that in that situation then pick it back up and i can just counter, oh, you, counter. you're pretty much just down to that card because i was at the same point too i only had two cards uh-huh. i ended up winning with them because it was uh a counter like that from the space deck and get rid of a card from someone's discard pile mm-hmm. so by that point we were down to two people and so i was basically just like count whatever he does and then get rid of their yeah discard pile which of course wasn't very fun especially for him because it was just like seven turns of him just losing yeah at that point you could just probably be like all right I but we did we did actually he had like four cards left and we're just like all right i'm gonna win in uh-huh. four turns yeah well less it's but. just math yeah um for uh the other he said yeah he said for both versions he thought that another mechanic would be good for disaster he wrote the theme is very well realized and he gave his information. Um, and um, let's, let's look at the other one. So uh, he played Spaced at first. Both of them lost. So I guess you won the first one. Yeah. And actually, I think he won the, the second one. Um, about the second, our second review had pretty much all positives um, with the only thing... Um, I guess he really loved the disaster one and still liked the spaced one. Gave the spaced one a, a theme of four, but everything else fives, so he was a big fan. Uh, he wrote, there are a couple of cards which aren't completely done, which disc oh, clear, which discard slash destroy pile they automatically go to. Oh, yeah, there's, when I was redoing the spaced one, uh, I did a lot of just replace words and it didn't catch all the words I need to actually replace. So I actually have to go through and um, go through all the cards oh, okay. and change some of them because they're still some of them still say recycled pile. <coughs> well, it should be clear. 
it, I think we can make it clearer to um, what cards get discarded to your discard pile, what cards get discarded to the, the central pile. Um, because I noticed a lot of people would be like, Earthquake, and they would discard to the central. And I think that... That, ha that is... happened a lot, too. I think that's also... In your game? Yeah, that's just getting used to like the mechanics of the game. Yeah. Because a lot of, uh, a lot of time... Um, Can you color code it? Code I think that I think we might need to do something like that on the final. Maybe put design. like a red border on the ones that you actually discard in the center, and that, maybe like the, green or blue border on the ones that you actually just discard on your. That is something I can probably do, but I can guarantee you it's still going to happen because it's, the, it's just yeah. it's just it's not something that happens in a lot of games. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that people are used to, and it's not building off of anything. So like a lot of mechanics in games are. Even if they're new, they're built off of other mechanics people have used before, so mm. everyone kind of has a feeling for how they're supposed to work. And then when you make things that just don't work the way you think they're supposed to work, yeah. people have trouble. Like, it's not it's not like they're you know just can't follow along. It's just it's not how they're used to playing games. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Sometimes, so like uh, I've seen cards I think in different games that will have like. Um, tsunami, as an example, I don't remember if it's a discard or not. But under tsunami, we'll have under parentheses it says keep or discard, like in yeah. But well, I, I I agree that it's a good it's a good plan to like color code them or mm -hmm. make notifications. Yeah, I'm just saying that it's like that it's, 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 it's not an avoidable. It's we can't. It's nothing that we can right. avoid. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Whatever we right. do, but right? At least I in agree. the first yeah. playthrough. But the color coding thing, I kind of like. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, because there's really only a few scenarios. Either you discard it there or you discard it here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and everything else could happen in the in the text itself. Yeah. Um, one thing, uh, since we played the they played the disaster one f second, they had a better uh, understanding of the rules. So I think that probably helped in their enjoyment of it. So I think next time we test it, we should uh, flip so it. So yeah, the. Uh the reviews are tilted in your favor they're, towards your theme. They're tilted. It's, it's our favor. It's it's you know it's it's we're trying to get the best thing and and if that's space or trash or lollipops or whatever, but they they really liked um, I guess the because they thought that we were making two versions of the same game and we yeah. plan on producing like we plan on producing a space version we plan on producing a disaster version. I mean that's not out of the and, realm of possibilities. It's just right. Yeah, now. I think that's he actually a, he wrote. I like that you have different versions. It would help to unify some of the terminology between versions to make them more swappable between versions. Uh, but it's nice to have different flavors for different folks. And they were saying that um, you could even have like a kid's version where instead of, uh, you know, like it's like kids like, I don't know, dropping peanut butter on the ground, discard your hand or like sneak out of your crib and like get some snacks. That's like retrieving something. Um, you know, like they're saying there's different well, things. A divorce version <laughs> could be divorce. fun. Well, it's the same, <laughs> Wipe it's out the all same the reason we're doing like all these different versions, too, just because this game can work with... It's it's like Flux, Yeah, a game yeah. that you love so much. <laughs> I'm just, starting to warm up to Flux now. Yeah, you, could just, you can, you can kind of just like slap a theme on there that uh, works, that like emphasizes the mechanics, yeah. and it'll, it'll work. Although it's, I wonder, does Flux change the cards, or is it just straight skin? No, it changes it the cards. Cha I thought so. I have Not a version. Well, you brought one. I bought the Batman version. I right. think I have one that I can bring in. We can uh, kind of compare. Look, yeah. But yeah. They, I mean, they don't. The the cards they change and they change. It's kind of like our game where they change like the name of stuff, but the actual mechanics in the game the don't really yeah. change. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, some okay. Stuff, yeah. Some of them do do have some extra rules depending on mm -hmm. what they're doing. Yeah. But overall, they're generally the same game. You, yeah, you're doing yeah. the same thing. You're like you're adding a card on top of the other card. You're switching hands. You're yeah. doing pretty much the same mechanics. Like yeah. he said, it's just. But fun fact: mixing multiple versions of Flux together is not fun. Hmm. Well, up to this point, I would say that mixing any version of Flux together is was not <laughs> fun. But I'm, war I'm warming up to the idea. Uh, Chris says he's about 12 minutes behind. Chris, you got to go back and rewatch this because I told a very dramatic story. Carla was shocked and appalled yes. for a little while, um, but it all turned out with a happy ending. Yes. Um, so, let's see. So, what else? So, I mean, I was happy that it went over pretty well. I mean, it did kind of feel like playing just like a regular game. Um, and uh, we, we had a bit of a conversation, and 
uh, some of the guys that they really liked the uh, the disaster theme. Well, I think for the same reason I liked it, that you don't see it too much, but um, I think they felt that like the cards like match the theme pretty well in terms of like oh like they could see this happening like it, it like called back to like oh I saw something like this happen in a movie and like one of the guys got that it was like kind of like tongue in cheek like um, you know it's not like a serious disaster it's like it's like a poking fun at, at the disaster genre like yeah. uh, that sort of thing. Uh, which is good because the artwork is not tongue in cheek. I mean, I'd like it to be if you know what, if we go this way and we get it. I would like it to be clearly like an exploding kittens, not not quite like that, but like a not serious artwork. Um, but uh, but even like the crappy artwork that I have, they they kind of still got it. Um, I mean, after our games too, a lot of like the verbal feedback too that at least I was getting after my game was mm-hmm. that people were enjoying it because it was also like a game that you can play with people and not that you don't pay attention to it but you don't have to like focus on it <clears throat> it's a kind of game that you can actually play and have conversations with and people talk and, and have other fun stuff yeah and still be able to keep up with it right like you could look at what's going on and like just like not pay attention for a few minutes and then come back and it's probably yeah. fine i mean maybe you didn't notice that someone has a powerful card in their deck or something but it's not the end of the world, and it's a short game. Like in the end, it's you know, it's not supposed to be Twilight well, Imperium. I mean, it's it's something that you should play the for fun. Version, it might be the end of the world. It might it it could literally be the end of the world. <laughs> ben Mitchell, what's up? Thanks for joining. Him. Oh wait, this is this is uh, one of the guys that was there last night. What's up, Ben? We're talking about our unpub event last night, our unpub uh, playtesting. I think I know uh, a designer that should be good for this for the designing. Oh yeah. Of like uh, something like. What is it? Exploding Kit? Exploding like, Kit. Yeah, that kind of vibe. Yeah, uh, fun art. Type well, of you know, idea. when I have a business card, I'll be sure to give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first thing I'm going to work on. I got this person's business card for you, though. There you go. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, so what do you think? Where are we at now, Ben? Do, do you want to get it some more live play test, or do you think we could start getting it into the hands of our greedy little club members here that are clamoring to, to play test and give us some feedback? Half of me just kind of wants to, to hold off just to make them wait You longer. just want to be a little withholding? But I think we, we can probably start making sort of print play so, things for people. So how, how would you picture that happening? Do you picture us printing it, cutting it out, and, like, mailing it, or just, like, sending off a, a sheet, uh, like a file, and letting them... Probably sending the file because there's nothing... Like, these are straight prototype sets anyway, so uh, it's not like we're... Sending, it, like, final artwork yeah. or something. Because we still need to figure that out, too. What do you think about print and play in general? I've had a few people recommend uh, having a free print and play just to kind of, just like for promotional purposes. So people play it and then, you know, um, you know, are interested, find out if they're interested or not. Do you think that from a business perspective, is that something that could hurt, you think? Or could, I mean, obviously it could help by getting the word out. I honestly Could hurt don't know. Too. I, I, haven't, know. I don't have much experience with print and play just in general. Well, maybe we'll throw it out to anybody watching this in the future, because there's only a few people in here right now, I think. Let us know if you have experience with print and plays and if it affected your decision to buy or made you more likely to buy, less likely to buy, um, or you know, even if it just helped you, your awareness of the game. Um, because even if people didn't buy, that, that's okay. We're not looking to make like millions of dollars off of this. It's more about getting it out there and, you know, getting in people's hands, having some it's fun. The experience, man. The experience. It's all about the experiences. It's about the money. Man. Yeah, this is. This that's is why our, you're the secretary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, keep us on track. Um, all right, I think that's uh, that's about all I got for this. I'm excited to start getting it off to people. Um, What's next? What's our next step, Ben? Where do we go from here? I start working on um, finding artists. Well, figuring out final layouts. Do you think we figure out where we're going to get these things printed? Yeah, yeah. What Other about X. what about uh, settling on themes? Should we just get more uh, feedback from? From playtesters, and then decide. But well, we can on send out theme. the. We can do the print and play stuff, and people can give play us feedback. Play both versions, type of thing, and then see. Or they can request versions. 
whichever version gets requested the most. Hey, we have a winner. No, because just because they, well, I mean, it would be, that'd be like a data point. Yeah. Like, which one that was, that initially was, seems more. That was mostly a joke. Um, I, d- I don't want to figure out theme by vote. <laughs> no, well, I mean, but there is some, so there's some um, information there. Like, if something just inherently sounds more interesting, like if someone, like, off the bat is like, Hey, like I know about space. I I like Star Wars. I like Star Trek. Like I would want to play the space game, you know. Even if we got it in their hands and they liked another theme better, the fact that like you might not get someone's foot in the door, even interested without like a theme that grabs them, you know. I think that's good information. Witch and wizards. Uh, Witch and wizards. Witch and wizards. <laughs> that's Carlos' theme. <laughs> that's that's, that's theme. the theme that Carlos yes. secretly working yes. on. <laughs> I'm pretty sure would, no secretary. matter which theme we have. Which you, which you, every theme we settle on, there's going to be people that I want aren't else. on with the theme. No. So uh, we'll just do a stretch goal. Uh, we'll just throw the, throw the other theme on there. And then we can have another stretch goal: the trash version, and then the, the original. Whatever Carlos, what is that? Doing. What am I doing? As I said, I'm far Witches behind. And wizards, I don't know. Are there any cards which yeah. benefit Potions. you and one Dozen opponent? Uh, Could be fun. What was that? Huh, that might not be great, a two-player version, though. Chris is asking if there's any cards that you play that benefit not just you, but another opponent as well. Well, I mean, technically blowing up one of your opponent's hands benefits the other guy. But, I mean, nothing specific. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess the one think- downside of helping someone else is it might slow the game down a little bit. Sort of like on Monopoly when people like love putting money on free parking. And it's like, yeah, it's fun to get, but then it keeps the game going an extra, like, you know, hour or something like that. Um, I think it is important that the game, like, has a steady pace towards ending. You know, like, that that middle discard pile gets higher and higher. And, uh, you know, otherwise it would just go on forever, which I like that it's pretty quick. Plus, if you make cards that help other people and you just don't want to help other people, then you just get a bunch of dead cards in your deck anyway. Yeah. Yeah, There's already a few cards that I'm usually not that excited about. Um... So, yeah, I kind of don't want too many of those. I think uh, the City in Ruins one, the one where you reshuffle your deck, your hand into your deck. Yeah. I guess it's like, eh, like, you know, why would I want to do that? I know, I know there's probably situations, but most of the time I'm looking to hurt somebody instead. Or, or like, get a card back. Mm-hmm. Hurt, I would never hurt you, Carla. Come on. Adam joined it. What's up, Adam? This is, I think this is the Adam from there last night. Look, we got both people that were there last night are watching the live stream now. Um, what's up, guys? You guys could say hi. Say hi. Uh, all right, so we'll work on getting this into some people's hands, and we'll do some more thinking about the theme. Get business cards, right? And a designer. <laughs> and a designer. Are you offering to be the designer, yeah, or are you I'm offering, offering to find the designer? Talk to a designer. I was going to say, I, get, I, I helped you out with Illustrator. I think I you should, uh, should figure this out. I can work on working this out. <laughs> work it up. <laughs> Um, It'll be free. And then we got to look at printing, and I'm going to continue with uh, trying to grow the email list and marketing and that sort of thing. So plenty to do. Just need to keep remembering to do it. Need like a, a to-do list or something. But this was good. This is a good a good step. Yeah. All right. If uh, you want to see what we're doing Uh, i started sending emails i figure i'll probably send like an email a week just showing like uh linking one of the videos that we did one of the streams uh the which way is it depending on if you're on mobile or desktop should be a link here or somewhere else you know what i'll just throw one in the chat too i'll do it afterwards um to sign up for our email list and what else if you want to watch these videos i tag them in the unit section so you can see our progress and we got a giveaway going on right now. You could win Oak and Iron or Forbidden Desert and Island. You got to be on the email list. You got to comment um, or add some people to the group. And I think that's about it for housekeeping, right? Yep. Yeah. Anything else? All right. Well, thanks so much for watching and uh, let us know your feedback. Stay tuned for more.